And we're back again. We're the Horror Guys. With episode... 38. 38. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And you know who we are, so let's get on with the movies. This week, we've got... What do we got? We got The House of Frankenstein. The house that Frankenstein built. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from 1944. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The man who could cheat death. He could. And that was from 1959, Hammer Film. Mm hmm. Uh, Got any modern movies? Tombs of the Blind Dead is more modern. 1972, Spanish subtitle. It's getting there. More modern. Yeah. And the Banana Splits movie. I like dessert. From just this year. Mm -hmm. From just all too recently. Not the ice cream kind. The no. kids' show kind. The kids' show kind, yes. Banana Splits. I remember that show. I do, too. Vaguely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and there's our movies for this week. So yeah. Here, let's talk about them. Let's talk about snacks first. Snacks. We Crunchy have a snack rolls. Here. Crunchy rolls. Crunchy rice rolls. All natural. Only four ingredients. White rice, sugar, corn syrup, and agar. Agar. Somebody was criticizing these vegan. because they've got gelatin. Well, the agar is a gelatin, but it's made from seaweed. So, yes, these are vegan, all natural, low sugar. I still have nightmares from Japan. I used to teach in Japan, and every time I'd finish up at the kindergarten, one of the lun- one of the cur- one of the kindergarten ladies would say, "Would you like a cookie?" And of course, I'd always say <laughs> yes because <laughs> cookie. cookie. And they'd always, always, always give me a rice cake, a plain rice cake, a plain, and, and they called bland, the, and they called those cookies. Dry. They don't have cookies with sugar over there. Huh. They don't have sugar anything over there. Huh. <clears throat> These are very reminiscent of rice krispie treats rice with krispie no treats flavoring. With yeah, without the marshmallow. Yeah, rice yeah, krispie no marshmallow. rice krispie cereal compressed into tubes. With just a little bit of sweetener added. There is sweetener, so it beats Japanese cookies. 38 calories per roll, which is oddly specific. Okay, I don't hate these. I thought I would. I like them. Okay, yeah. 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 I'd rather have a bag of M&M's, but for health food, this is pretty good. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Healthier than M&M's, for sure. I wouldn't know exactly call it health food necessarily, but... What's in it? White rice, sugar, corn syrup, agar. And agar is, would you say, seaweed gelatin or something? Seaweed gelatin. Yeah. So, the somebody, creature from the Black Lagoon snacks. Somebody was saying, oh, these aren't vegan, they got gelatin in them. Well, that kind of gelatin comes from seaweed. All right. Then. Yeah. So, something that didn't come from seaweed would be the House of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Directed by Crunch, Crunch, Crunch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> directed by Earl C. Kenton. There's one I've never heard of before. Hey, you know what? It was a dark and stormy night. It was. <laughs> written by Edward <laughs> T. Lowe and Kurt C. Odmack. Stars Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney Jr and J. Carol Nash. And before you figure it, before you get disappointed, Boris Karloff is not the Frankenstein's monster. Mm-mm. He's not Dr. Frankenstein. He's a whole new guy. Mm-hmm. One hour and 11 minutes. We begin in Neustadt Prison on a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you two up. Dr. Nyman is a prisoner who vows to get out and continue the work of Dr. Frankenstein, his and mentor and idol. Boris Karloff. Yeah, that's that Boris. Huh? Dr. Nyman. He explains to the hunchback in the next cell, whose name is Daniel, that his brother worked with Frankenstein. Just then, lightning strikes the prison, and there's a tremendous cave-in. The two escape. It's a really wimpy, crumbly old You know, prison. if lightning strikes a big stone castle, is the roof going to cave in and explode and not, all that? Not it's normally. stone. But this looked like it was very old and very crumbly. It looked like they could have kicked their way through the wall. Mm. It was it was really bad shape. The two escape. Yeah. They come up on a circus wagon for L- L- Professor Lampini's stuck in the mud, and they help him get unstuck. In reward, the men give the two guys a ride. And Lumpini, Lumpini brags that one of his exhibits is the actual skeleton of Dracula. Nyman says he can set Dracula free again by pulling the stake from his heart. Of course, he would never do that because he's a good guy. 
And like all this time, nobody has been tempted or done that or tried that or you know. Just one way just to, to prove it, you know, pull just it out and see what pull happens. it out and see what happens and stick it back in. He wakes you know, up you and could. you stick it back in. Yeah, and pull yeah. it out and stick it back every in. every night, every show. <laughs> <laughs> you could make a show out of that. What a show that would be! Yeah. Watch me turn this skeleton into Dracula and back again. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> Nyman gets Daniel to kill Lampini. And they head on to Viseria, where 15 years before, Nyman tried to put a man's brain in a dog, which was why he was incarcerated. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So Nyman now, has now scores has, to settle. And he has replaced Lampini, and he's he's passing himself off yes. as Lampini instead of... Boris Nyman. Karloff, who is really... Lan- Nyman is pretending Nyman. to be Lampini. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Daniel the Hunchback is... His faithful his sidekick. His hunchback servant. His faithful sidekick, yes. Nyman arrives in town and gives a show using Lampini's stuff. The Burgermaster thinks the new Lampini looks familiar. Ooh, Don't I've seen I know you, you somewhere before. No, no, no. No, <laughs> not me. Really not me. No, I'm Lampini. <laughs> I'm the new Lampini. <laughs> yeah. Nyman pulls the stake from the skeleton, and sure enough, it works, although the skeleton now looks like John Carradine. And... And there was a thing that made me say, wait a minute, too. It's a bare skeleton, just bones, and pulls out, and it forms, and it's a neat effect, fully clothed, fully in Dracula black outfit. Like, because Universal okay. 1940s. Well, I understand the necessity it. for not having a naked Dracula sitting there, but, you know, it's pretty amazing that the clothes regenerated, too. What happened to the in the original 1931 Dracula when they staked him? Actually, did, did he disappear? Did he, he turn to a skeleton? Did he, he just die? I thought he turned to a skeleton. Yeah. But and Christopher Lee one, disappeared. Too, Christopher though. Lee one turned to dust. He don't count. That was later. No, it was just a skeleton with clothes. It he was, still had clothes though. Yeah. Okay, the clothes and, didn't and go the, away. And the the stake was through the rib cage. Yeah. So they couldn't have undressed the skeleton really without dislodging the stake, which was, you know, through his through his Sure. Well, I was going to say they could have cut everything. the clothes off, but that doesn't explain where the clothes came from later. Yeah. 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 So he comes back from the dead well dra- <clears throat> as a well-dressed John well Carradine. Dressed, yeah. And he's like Doctor Who. Every time Dracula comes back, apparently, he's like a different, different regeneration. Actor, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, that's my explanation for it. It works. <laughs> it's like... The two of them make a deal. Baron Latos, who is really Dracula, picks up the Burgermeister and his family in his coach. And they give you a ride. Mm-hmm. Dracula gives Rita, Hussman's granddaughter, his ring, and now she works for him. Kind of a hypnotic, hypnotic ring. thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dracula yeah. hypnotizes Hussman, becomes a bat, and then bites him in the neck. So he doesn't, you know, the man doesn't reach over and bite him. He turns into a bat first. Yeah. That's yeah. one way to get around those censor- censorship things that Lugosi ran into. Yes, yes. Dracula yeah. hypnotizes Hussman, becomes, okay, and bites him in the neck. Mm-hmm. Rita acts weird, and her husband recognizes Dracula's ring on her finger. Mm. Carl, Rita's husband, calls Inspector Arns. And Inspector Arns is um, the same actor who played the one-armed inspector in Son of Frankenstein, whose name I can't think of right He's now. He's typecast as a cop. It seems uh, to be, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Carl and the inspector pursue Dracula and Nyman, but Daniel throws Dracula's coffin out of the wagon, and then Dracula's wagon just sort of falls apart. He rode it to death. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. As the good guys close in, Dracula gets hit with sunlight and turns back into a skeleton. And that's the end of Dracula for this movie. And it's a naked and skeleton I'm again. Not too. kidding. Well, okay. If the sun <laughs> hits him and the clothes go away, then the you know you fix it and the clothes come back. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted to know what happened to Bella Lugosi's clothes. Yeah. They're part of him, I guess. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Some, yeah. Magic clothes. Yeah. Nyman and Daniel then head off to the town of Frankenstein for the next man on their hit list. Daniel the Hunchback spots a gypsy girl, Ilanka, that he likes. Hunchback liking the gypsy girl. Draw your own connections there. Well, and part of the, the it sweetens the deal for Daniel because Nyman says that you know it, you know you don't have to have that you know twisted hunchback body. You know, once we get Frankenstein's notes and I recreate his work, I can mm, give I you a new you body. A new body, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And Daniel's all for that. The policeman yeah. says they've had enough horrors in this town, and the, the freak show basically has to move on. He points to the ruined castle up on the hill. And, of course, by then, a gypsy man attacks the girl, and Daniel brings her with them. He comes to her rescue. And and there's hints of uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame there, with uh, the yeah. Hunchback being sweet See, on a dancing gypsy girl. The and, way this was you know, built, it had Frankenstein, 
It had the werewolf. It had Dracula. It had a mad scientist, and it had a hunchback. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're, 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 that was actually in the advertising that the hunchback and the mad scientist were part of the gang. And they almost also also almost included the mummy. Almost. Taurus. Yeah, they were going they, to. They were going to, and budget decided problems. budget was too much, and yeah. yeah, so they they didn't. But yeah. Anyway, I guess they could have had him on display <clears throat> too. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. uh, the gypsy man and he rescues her and takes her with him. The two flirt until she sees the hunch on his back and turns away from him. She's pretty nice about it, but and they can still be friends, but she's clearly repulsed. Well, and then she sees Larry Talbot, and she's like, Daniel who? Boing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this this hunchback, he's not Carl, he's not Fritz, he's not Igor. He's he's a good-looking guy, other than the hunchback. Yeah. I mean, he's normal-looking. He's not at least you know, it's a, a monster himself. Pretty symmetrical. Huh? No Quasimodo. Yeah. Yeah, he's not, yeah. not too freakish looking. Yeah. Nyman comes back, and he and Daniel go to the ruins of the castle. And guess what they find? They're looking for the Frankenstein records, that but the floor falls through, and they find a... cavern is still there. Hidden it's room still... with a snow cave beyond. It's well, still at least a they're snow being cave. consistent. Yeah. It's a stupid idea to have a snow cave, but at least they're being consistent. And guess who's frozen there? Bob from accounting? No, no, not that they found. <laughs> yeah, they find both the Wolfman and Frankenstein's monster frozen in the ice. And Larry, we'll set them Larry free Talbot, and they'll help us, he Larry says. Larry Talbot in his human form. He doesn't look like the werewolf. Oh, he wasn't the werewolf frozen, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was? Yeah, he, oh, he, he okay. changed back as he melted. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right, because he froze melted. It I wasn't froze, much changed. of an effect, but that's the way yeah, they did that's it. that's right, yeah. We'll set them free and they'll help us, he says confidently. That's a lot of assumption there. Mm-hmm. They light a big fire and wait for things to thaw. Larry Talbot comes out of the ice in dry clothes. <laughs> <laughs> At least he had clothes going into the ice. Yeah, yeah, I did. And Nyman yeah. explains things to him and says if Talbot can show him the Frankenstein notebooks, that he can help Talbot die. Yeah. Which is still his goal. He's still all whiny about that he can't die and he wants to because he's a monster. You know, handcuffs and jail cells aren't enough. you got to die. He wants to replace Larry's <clears throat> brain as that'll fix him right up and solve all the problems. And there's our, that's not how this that's works for this episode. That's not how science works. Yeah. <laughs> this somehow makes sense to Larry, who leads Nyman to the records. Oh, and he's, he, he tells Daniel he's going to give him the monster's body, doesn't he? The big, strong... No, you know. he wants Larry's body. Oh, well, yeah, but didn't he promise Daniel? No, he just promised Daniel a new body. Yeah, well, he, oh, I, he later he tells him that. Yeah. I don't know if he has at this point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it don't work out that way. It, anyway, the yeah, monster... There's, there's fr- brain swapping plans that yeah, don't work out. Yeah, yeah. Frankenstein's monster is still alive, but very weak. They need to do some kind of restorative surgery on him. And to recharge. Recharge. Yeah. They all hit the road to Visaria, where Nyman's lab is located. Ilanka and Larry hit it off, and she flirts with him now as he drives the wagon. Daniel starts getting jealous. They arrive at Nyman's lab and start regenerating the monster. Nyman and Daniel go out and capture Strauss and Ullman, another of their enemies. He plans on putting one of their brains in the monster and the wolfman's brain into the other. Again, that's not how that works. Daniel wants Talbot's body, and when Nyman refuses, he starts looking sideways at the selfish old man. Yeah. Of course, he's a hunchback. He has to look sideways. <laughs> that's where the crack in the loyalty forms right there. Yeah. yeah. Daniel tells Ilanka that Larry's a werewolf, but she doesn't believe him. Daniel then takes it out on the monster, whipping his helpless body with whips. The wolfman gets out and kills one of the villagers because they didn't lock him up or nothing. That's what the werewolf does. And yeah, it's like, oh, it's a full moon. Yeah. Everybody like, knew it was coming. Surpri- and, and Larry Talbot himself acted kind of surprised. Yeah, he was like, like <gasps> the moon. Full moon. Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> you know, the, being able to predict moon phases is not a recent thing. They were doing that thousands of years ago. Uh-huh. This is not a new project. Yeah, but it's always a thing with Larry Talbot. <laughs> Don't need your iPhone for that one. <laughs> they immediately, the townspeople suspect a werewolf. Ilenka loves Larry, but she makes a silver bullet in order to help him when the time comes. Because mm-hmm. now the mythology says he can only be killed by someone who loves him with a silver bullet. And it's a neat transformation this time. They sh- they show the footsteps going. As he's transforming, they don't show him. Bare feet. They show barefoot. Wolf feet. Yeah, transitioning gradually with each step. That was a neat effect. It's really low budget, but it worked. It was low budget, but I thought it was really cool. The villagers are out looking for the werewolf, and when they notice blinking lights in Newman's lab. Mm. They keep calling him Newman, it's Nyman. 
Nyman has recharged the monster. Tell Talbot I'm ready for him, he says, just as the full moon comes up. Yeah, let's do this, like, during the full moon. Yeah, the worst possible time you could do it. <laughs> yeah. It's not like people doubt that he's the Wolfman. Everybody yeah, knows everybody it. knows. Yeah. The Wolfman then attacks Elanka, and she shoots him with a silver bullet. He dies and reverts back to human. She dies for reasons. Daniel finds her body and then kills Nyman, and then the monster kills him in retaliation. The monster grabs Nyman and runs from the villagers. Nyman isn't quite dead and warns the monster, Not this way! Quicksand! And they soon both sink away. Because it's quicksand. Because it's quicksand. In the 1940s. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end from yeah. pretty much everybody. And that was a thing, yeah. And so there, Did you so like no it? No more? Well, mostly, yeah. I liked seeing all the characters, but it was mm. very poorly done. Yeah, it was choppy and, yeah, yeah. maybe a six. Dracula and maybe these other six. guys. Yeah. A six? Yeah. yeah. Not, Lucky a, not a six? Um, a high four. Hmm. This is kind of a mess. Easily mm. the worst of the Frankenstein series so far. So far that we've seen, yeah. Much like the Batman movies of the 90s, more villains doesn't make for more entertainment. It's just overcrowded, and the var- various characters don't interact or affect each other very much. Yeah, Dracula doesn't interact at all with the Frankenstein. He's dead before anybody else shows up. Or the Wolfman. Yeah. Dracula didn't show any intelligence at all, and he's supposed <clears throat> to be the smart one. Yeah, and he was wussy and just <laughs> backed right down to Neiman and yeah. yeah. He didn't last very yeah. long, and his section of the film almost seemed like an afterthought, as he had had no interactions with the Wolfman or the monster. Again, Larry Talbot knows and tells everyone what he's going to do, and no one bothers locking him up, tying him up, or even putting a leash on him. No. Nyman is no. a smart guy. Did he not realize what the Wolfman was going to do when the Wolfman, when the wolf, when the moon came up? He knew. He just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Daniel is not your typical hunchback servant. He's otherwise not bad looking, not insane, and really loyal until he gets screwed over repeatedly. Still, do all hunchbacks have to fall for gypsy girls? It's like a rule. Well, maybe that's just racist. For these two. Hunchbacks plus gypsy equal Mm -hmm. trouble. She cast her her spell. And this was still black and white. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Yeah, Yeah, they they tried really hard getting all those characters together, but no, not so much. Mm -hmm. See, who is playing the monster this time? Uh, some, uh, Glenn some Strange un- was yeah. his first time doing it. He got paid five hundred dollars. Got paid five hundred dollars to, to Boris Karloff's twenty thousand. Yeah, well, but Boris Karloff was in his own face, and he had a lot of acting in this one. Lon, Lon Chaney Jr. got ten thousand. Carradine. They got seven thousand. Okay. Yeah. And this is the first real thing we've seen with John Carradine in it. I know he could, he plays Dracula again several times. He was young once. He wasn't real young here. Younger than he is now. Yeah, okay. Well, speaking of young, our next movie is The Man Who Could Cheat Death from 1959. Hammer film. It's hammer time. Mm -hmm. Directed by Terrence Fisher. Written by Jimmy Sangster and Barry Lyndon. Stars and doesn't star Peter Cushing. Amazing. Anton Diffring, Hazel Court, and believe it or not, Christopher Lee. Knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. One hour, 23 minutes in color. Color. Glorious. Full color. Paris, 1890. A man walks home in the foggy darkness. He's attacked and dragged into the bushes. He's killed, and then the man performs some kind of surgery on him as the credits roll. The body is then dumped into the river. A couple, Dr. Gerard, played by Christopher Lee, and Janine, played by Hazel Court, goes to the Clinique de Paris to see Dr. Bonnet, who is Anton Diffring. Very upper crust. Yeah. Very, very upscale. They're, they're all wealthy. Yes, rich people. He's a doctor and a sculptor. They're all friends. Here to see Bonnet. Bonnet? Bonnet. They call him Bunny, yes. Bonnet. Bo- Bonnet's new yeah. statue. Mm-hmm. Bonnet is interrupted by a servant who says, He's not on the train, which clearly upsets Bonnet. Benet runs off all the guests at exactly 6.30 as he's got something important to do. Mm-hmm. He starts looking at his hands under the light, <clears throat> and he seems nervous. Needs another fix. Margot, one of his models, interrupts him, and he gets really annoyed. He shouts for her to get out as his eyes turn bright green. I think he's going to hulk out here. Mm-hmm. And he says, too late! And then his face changes. Yep, hulk time. 
Yeah. And he is forced to kill her to keep his secret. He opens up the safe and drinks the formula inside. Very dramatic formula. It's in a beaker inside the safe. And bubbling, it's bubbling and, and steaming smoking and, and very intense bright green light shining down on it. Yeah, yeah. secret formula for sure. A, secret a little scientist measured, formula. measured cup of it. And a moment later, feels better. looks normal again. Yeah, all better. Janine comes to visit the next day, and she wants to know why Benet won't allow himself to fall in love with her. Why won't you love me? <laughs> It's kind of a pitiful thing to say, isn't it? Do you love me? No. Why? It's a little bit. It was a little little bit pitiful, yeah. Dr. Weiss arrives. This is the man who wasn't on the train last night. The old man has had a stroke and lost the use of one hand. He keeps it in his his, uh, coat. Mm -hmm. Weiss says he cannot do the operation, which upsets Benet tremendously. Benet has been taking his serum, serum every six hours, and it's all that keeps him alive. He needs this operation. Needs the operation. Weiss will teach a new, younger doctor to do the work, but Benet must find a doctor that he trusts. Janine leaves, and Benet suggests she brings Gerard over for dinner tonight. Luckily, Christopher Lee is a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. But Christopher Lee's a good guy. He'd never do it, right? No, he'd never do that. Weiss chastises Benet over keeping the operation a secret rather than going public and making it for all humanity. He pulls out a photo of the two of them as young men. Only one of them got old. Only the one got aged. Benet says he is now 104 years old. Mm -hmm. Looks Mm. good for 104. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That evening, Weiss hits it off with Gerard, and they talk shop all night, while Benet and Janine talk romance. Weiss explains that there's an operation that only he knows how to do, but he cannot do it anymore because of his hand. He wants to teach Gerard how to do it in his place. Gerard will remove a gland from Benet and replace it with a fresh one. Crunchy roll. Mm, crunchy roll bit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, Gerard doesn't understand the point of the operation, and Weiss is evasive about it. And he's got moral objections to just doing, doing an operation, for not just knowing why. Yeah, why or, do this? Yeah, why? Why for do this? Do no harm. Yeah. Gerard agrees to do it finally, though. <clears throat> Inspector Legree comes to the door. He wants to question Benet about Margot's disappearance. The last time she was seen was last night at Benet's reception. Margot who? Yeah, yeah, who? Yeah. yeah. No, mm. she left here. She was fine. Yeah, yeah. Never saw her again. Yeah. The inspector mm. wants to see the statue of her because he's never seen the woman, but Benet lies and says he broke it. I simply cannot part with my sculpture, he explains later. Yeah, because he thought it would have been taken as evidence. Yeah, can't stand that just that. seems really lame. It just mm, like, a little bit. puts a target on him yeah, for lying. Yeah, yeah, it does. Weiss mentions that ten years ago, one of his other models disappeared, and then ten years before that... Another one did. Hmm. And this goes on and on. It's a pattern. He realizes what's going on. Old man Weiss is catching on. Mm -hmm. Weiss examines the gland and realizes it was was cut from a living body, unlike all the old ones that came from donor bodies. Benet explains that he couldn't just get access to more dead cadavers after it took so long for Weiss to arrive. He's like four or six weeks late. Mm -hmm. Weiss doesn't see how this could be justified, killing an innocent man in order to save Benet. Weiss starts in on the do you think you are a god speech? There's always, There's always one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Benet doesn't want to continue getting older alone. Weiss thinks it's wrong to ask Janine to undergo the same procedure. Weiss wants nothing more to do with this. Weiss grabs the key to the safe when it's time to ingest more of the formula. His eyes turn green. They fu- Benet's eyes turn green. They fight, and the formula hits the floor. And we tried to warn Ludwig to just give him the key, don't we? Yeah. And what this, uh, we didn't say what the formula is or what the point of that is. If you get every the gland years, every ten years, you're fine. But in the meantime, this tides you over, yeah. this, this super formula. But it's only good for six weeks, and it takes two years to make a new jug. Yeah. And so Ludwig, in their fight, they for reasons. dropped the jug. Yeah, Benet's eyes turn green, and they fight, and the formula hits the floor. Benet then kills Weiss. Benet scoops and up drops off off the floor, and he has enough for one last treatment. We say, get a straw, get a straw. Yeah. Yeah. Gerard shows up the next morning to perform the operation, but Weiss obviously isn't there. Benet says he had to leave urgently during the night. Yeah, but everything's fine. Just do the surgery. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can figure don't, it out. Don't, yeah, disregard voice missing. Here's yeah. a gland. Switch it out for me. Yeah, yeah. It's not a <laughs> fuse. Gerard refuses to do the operation without Weiss. The inspector then talks to Gerard and explains that he's very confused about Benet's age. 
He's been doing a background check on the man, and it doesn't add up. Mm -mm. He, too, knows that a model has disappeared every ten years for a long while now. Which is just kind of coincidental. It's not like he is killing the models out of necessity. Apparently, every ten years this happens where there's a scene. and This gland that he's been switching out every ten years does come from corpses. He he goes to the morgue He's not killing the models to get the gland. It's just that they're discovering his secret, and he freaks out and kills them. It's not really clear. It's, it's, it's not it's clear. unclear. But, yeah. It is clear that he's not killing them for the gland. Mm-hmm. That comes from just but, honestly. But he, honest starts, work he there. starts losing his mind without the, without the serum, and that's what happened with this, this, yeah. this gal. She, she interfered with the, his dosage, and he went berserk and killed her. And, yeah. The inspector says Bonet would have to be over 60 if he were involved with the murders. Mm-hmm. Apparently he doesn't know about all the murders. Yeah. Gerard tells the inspector to look into Weiss's location every 10 years as well. Maybe the old man's involved, too. Hmm. Maybe. Bonet brings Janine to his warehouse, where he keeps statues of all the women he's murdered over the years. The now he's shame. looking a little creepy. He locks her in and goes to see Gerard. He explains the truth that he's 104 years old. If Gerard doesn't get the operation in in under six hours, he'll get all those years, all those diseases, and all those skin conditions right back bouncing, bounce, bounce back and hit him all at once. And he actually says skin conditions. Mm-hmm. Gerard says, it's an offense against nature, an offense against God. There's always one. There's two in this movie. There's two in this movie. Yeah, Benet are. explains to Gerard that something bad will happen to Janine if he doesn't try. Mm-hmm. Blackmail. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Benet goes out and kills a woman and cuts out her gland. This is a gift for Janine. Mm-hmm. Gerard shows up and they prepare for the operation. Meanwhile, Janine sits in the dungeon, waiting in her formal gown and cape. And she looks glamorous and perfect. In this way, filthy old dungeon. She's in this filthy old dungeon and she still looks amazing. I'm impressed. I Hammer was, Horror's I was impressed. Disney Princess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She Spotless. Hears a, it's a white gown, too. White gown, her, white cape. Her hair yeah. and makeup are perfect, and the gown is perfect and spotless. And how do, how do you do that when you're a prisoner in a dungeon? I'll be in your <laughs> stupid movie if you let me look great in every scene. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> she hears laughing from the next cell, and she goes in and finds a disfigured woman in there. The operation is a success, and Benet runs out, leaving Gerard clueless. He heads to the dungeon and talks to, J- to Janine. Do you still want to be with me forever? And he tells her the truth. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Gerard explains to Inspector Legree what has transpired. He also says that he hasn't really performed the operation. Gerard well, he, faked it. He did an incision, so the guy, you know, has a, you know, the, the wound he expects, but he didn't switch the gland out. Uh-oh. Yeah. Meanwhile, Benet starts turning green again. And worse. He gets old yeah. and gross and keeps yelling, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, as he chases Janine around the dungeon. The crazy girl then throws a lantern on him, and he and the crazy girl burn to death. Gerard and the inspector pull Janine away just in time. The end. Happy ending. So, of. did you like it? Mm-hmm. Overall, yeah. It was all right. Didn't love yeah. it. Yeah. It was okay. It's kind of a dumb yeah. idea for a movie, but a it, was, it was well done, I okay. guess. A little bit tame. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, enjoyed it. And somebody in there says it's a, a tale of glands and statues. <laughs> yeah. Peter Cushing was set to play Benet, but for some vague reason called in sick for this movie. Hammer Studio threatened to sue Cushing, but since he was their biggest star, they decided not to follow through. You think it would have been better with him? Not necessarily. They didn't no. think Cushing is really that young and glamorous looking by this point. I think, I mean, he yeah, he always kind of looked like a skull on and, legs. And he and, was looking older and gaunter then. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, he, they did want him for this. It just didn't work out that way. Mm-hmm. It's not clear why Benet killed his models every 10 years or why he kept killing so many women recently. Except for the gland he wanted to use on Janine, the others were unnecessary. We know why he killed the most recent girl. But that was a one-time situation, not something that would repeat every ten years. Mm-hmm. It's just not clear. Unless he's yeah, just a so psycho doing it for fun, but that's but not really ever no, said. No, I don't think so. No. Cause? Cause reasons. Cause just living forever isn't evil enough. They had yeah, to make him a murderer, too. They had to spice it up. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of some spicing up, we watched a short movie this year? We did. This week? This week, yeah. I know we saw yeah. one this year. It's all about masks. 
The Mask, mm-hmm. 2019. Link in the show notes to get you there. Mm-hmm. Directed by Adem Akiol and five minutes long. It's an international movie with no dialogue. Yeah, there's, nobody there's speaks. no speaking on it at all. There's some sound effects. It's not silent, but it's got like grunting and stuff. Nobody talks. Facial expressions. Sort of some of them. <laughs> Lots of facial expressions. <laughs> a man, literally with literally with no face, kind of looks like a mannequin head, mm-hmm. wakes up. He blindly stumbles across the room to put on one of a selection of faces hanging there. A frowning man at the store takes his money. Everyone stares at him angrily on the street, and his well, big he chose, grin. He chose the smiley face. Yes, he, he did. He chose a happy face. He's yeah. very happy. Yeah. Ex- exaggerated happy. Yeah. Now, do you think that they were all... Uh, well, let me would... explain the story okay. first. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone stares on the street and his big grin goes away as the day progresses. He sees a girl smiling at him from the front of the bus and his smile grows back. Yay, she's happy. No one speaks in this short movie. They grunt and emote, but no one speaks. The main guy is constantly and literally being pushed around all day. Finally, he goes home, his frown locked in from a bad day, and he hangs his face on the wall with dozens of other sad and grouchy faces. He's quickly using up the happy ones. But there's a happy one set aside for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a good day. Yes. The rest of the month doesn't look like it has been. <laughs> now, where were you going? Do you think that all their facial expressions were their own? Because that was really... I, I, I think I, everybody I was wearing I masks. I think everybody had masks. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the actors... I can't make my mouth frown that. Okay, you're, yeah, that's not bad. But even more, I can't smile even as big more as that so guy. than that. Yeah, and, he, and huge smile. Maybe they just found an actor that you know, yeah, just a flexible face. Really and... do it both ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of a, a sling blade kind of expression you just had there for a I second, like but... french fried potatoes mm. <laughs> <laughs> clearly but, it's an international anyway, movie with yeah. no dialogue <laughs> it's interesting and absorbing without really having any story to it but how is it a horror movie everyone was wears... a horror and we have... huh. and it i didn't think it was horror i thought it was really good i really liked it you should watch it I didn't think it was horror. Yeah, people take their faces off, but there's no gore. There's well, it was more scary. of a more fantasy sci-fi. It I certainly thought. is. Yeah, 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 not, yeah, not scary. Not. Yeah. I mean, this was just the. If world the they, world were really like that, this, it would be a scary place. This was the world they live in. Yeah. But Everyone yeah, think, wears a face to work every day, and often we come home with a different face. This guy is just a little less metaphorical about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's not scary. Yeah, but you should, it's check, entertaining. But you should it's check it out. It's yeah. really well done. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Speaking of well done and enjoyed a whole lot, next up we have the Banana Splits movie from 2019. <laughs> Before we get into this new movie that most people haven't seen yet, what is your, what do you think? I didn't like it very much. I didn't like it very much. No. I give it a solid <clears throat> three. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to like it. I wanted to like it too. I want. I went in like an, uh, wanting to like it, but yeah, I, I remember the characters yeah. when we were little, and it'd be like take, making Fred Flintstone an axe murderer. That'd be great. Yeah, they should totally do that someday. Except they should do it well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Directed by Danishka Esterhazy, written by Jed Elenoff and Scott Thomas. Stars Danny Kind, Finley Wojtak, his song, and Romeo Carrera, one hour, 29 minutes. You got a link, you can pick it up at Amazon and watch it for yourself. So basically, it's set in an alternate reality where the Banana Split show is still current, still being filmed. Yeah, okay. And they're animatronic, they're uh, free, free, free walking robots. Yeah, the, the, the one in our the universe con- had yeah. guys in guys suits in the suits. 70s, no. but these are robots. They're androids, yeah. Yeah. Harley wakes up Beth. He's wearing the elephant suit from the Banana Split show that he loves so much. He can't sleep because he's too excited about his birthday coming up tomorrow. Harley is obsessed with the show, and they're going to a live taping. None of his friends want to go because they're all a little too old for it now, but one girl does get roped in. One of his birthday gifts gifts is some kind of magic wand that shoots out like a pressurized sword. Oh, and that was so not subtle. There's no chance that'll come in useful later. It... 
like those umbrellas that you push the button and it goes thunk and you know except this has like a trident on the end it like was pointy. so obvious the first time he triggered it, it's like thunk. oh that's gonna so stab somebody or the bad guy or somebody I'm <laughs> it's just, such a dangerous so... <laughs> toy for a little kid too <laughs> yes yeah completely inappropriate <laughs> yeah really obvious where that was going yeah yeah <laughs> they uh, they arrive at studio one and the crowd is lined up around the building there's a lot more people interested in this show than we were led to believe. Mm -hmm. We meet several other families, and it sort of gives a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibe with all the oddball, unique characters. Yeah, a little bit. The tour yeah. people confiscate all the telephones. No calling for help. Yeah. Uh, ostensibly, it's well, like you can't no, take pictures. No, you, so you can't take pictures or, or live feed or anything. No, yeah. Copyright and all. Meanwhile, yeah. in the secret room behind the studio, Carl, the technician, upgrades Drooper's programming. And we can see that they're actually robots. Mm -hmm. Drooper's eyes now glow red, which is never a good sign with robots. Generally, no. I've never seen no. a red glowing robot before. Mm -hmm. That was that good. That was a good robot, yeah. Andy, the new VP of programming, has decided that the show is old and stupid. Literally, that's his words. It's old and stupid. Mm -hmm. And he's canceling the show, as of now. The show begins, and all the well, characters... one one last well, show. After, after this one. Yeah. The show begins, and all the characters come out doing their thing. Stevie, the human sidekick, is in his dressing room getting drunk. Austin, Haley's bro Harley's brother, talks to Paige, the Paige, Page, Page, Page the, the Page, Page is a joke, yeah. mm -hmm. to hook Harley up with backstage tickets to meet the splits. Stevie overhears Andy talking on the phone about canceling the show. But then one of the splits kills Andy. The show continues and then ends. Stevie explains to the splits that he's always hated them and now the show is over. Drooper's eyes go red again. Drooper shoves a huge lollipop down Stevie's throat. It's one of those big ones. And he goes, oh, and his neck goes, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Beth finds out Mitch has been cheating on her, and they fight. You can see that coming a mile away. He keeps yeah. going off to call somebody on his secret cell phone. This is the mom and stepdad of, yeah. the, of the boy. Got to have yeah. the family drama. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, one guy gets <clears throat> beheaded in a magic trick, and the other gets his face burnt off. Mitch literally gets run over by an elephant in a sports car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, ch the children are all locked up in a cage. Carl, the technician who built the splits, explains that the show is all they have, and the destruction is the network's fault for canceling the show. Because they don't want the show to end. When the children actually get out, we see, we see whose side he's really on. The producer of the show and the man with the burnt face have to walk through an oil slick and walk through a pie gauntlet, and they don't win the prize. No. Oh. The survivors catch up to Carl, who explains that the splits can't be stopped, and the show must go on. He's quite insane. He then learns that a traumatized <laughs> guest can be even more insane than he is. The splits mm -hmm. have taken all the children and chained them to the bleachers so the show can go on forever and ever. I guess the real question is whether or not that pointy weapon thing is ever going to get used in this movie. Well, yes. And then stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically Chuck E. Cheese meets Westworld. Literally, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's just all kinds of stupid. Mm -hmm. It starts off or like the original Westworld, where the the robots kind of you know went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the new one's not done yet. But yeah. yeah, like but, the original. I mean, more more like the original than the the, mm -hmm. the remake series. Yeah. It starts off good enough, but the execution of everything once the killing start is fairly awful. Mm -hmm. It's too scary to be a kids' movie and too childish to be a good horror movie. This is one of those movies that would be over if everybody simply got in their cars and left. There's no prison, there's no restraints, just people too stupid to run away. Mm -hmm. There are some good gore scenes, but it's really hard to get past this level of stupid. Did I say it was stupid? I can't believe the licensing for these characters ever got approved by Hanna-Barbera, but it did. Mm -hmm. The Somehow. concept yeah. is excellent. Somebody had a really good idea to make this movie using these old 70s characters. And it could have been so good. It could and have been. Other than the idea, everything else <laughs> went downhill fast. It wasn't so good. No, it was kind of bad. I wanted bad. it to be good, but it wasn't very good. It wasn't even close to good. Did we see any good movies this week? Our international feature. Oh, yeah. Tombs of the Blind Dead from 1972. That was pretty weird. It pretty was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Kind of low quality. The, the print we watched was pretty low quality, but mm -hmm. it's old, it's Spanish, probably not preserved well. Yeah. Director Armando Diasorio, written by Jesus Navarro Carrion Armando Diasorio. 
stars Lone Fleming, Cesar Berner, and Maria Elena Erpon. One hour, 41 minute Spanish subtitled. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? I did. I liked it. Yeah. I'm going to give it a serious seven or... If it were seven better quality half. video, I'd give it an eight. Seven and a half. Okay. I'd give it a seven and a half. Not yeah. exactly a zombie movie. Not exactly a ghost no. story. It's kind of its own thing. Zombie-ish. Yeah. We start out with many scenes of abandoned ruins. Betty meets Virginia at the pool in Lisbon. Virginia introduces her to her boyfriend, Roger, and they invite her to go with them to the country home. It was very fast talking and fast subtitles. Yeah. Well, you yeah. see, Spanish people, I mean, they're European. They, this was not meant for subtitles. It was just, you know, mm. you should be understanding what they're saying. Yeah. But yeah, it moves fast. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to come along, but <clears throat> Roger insists, so they all get on the train. Roger and Betty hit it off quickly, and Virginia starts getting very jealous very quickly. It seems that Virginia and Betty have been attracted to one another since their school days together. There's a little mm. lesbian flashback going on there. Mm. They're just good friends. Yeah. Uh huh. The ticket taker on the train explains that there are no towns for many miles, but Virginia sees a road and ruins on the horizon, so she jumps off the train. Yeah. Dumbest decision ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's a ruined old dead town up there. I think I'll jump well, off the train wants, and live she, there forever. She wants to get away from the couple. And, you know. Go sit in a different train car. <laughs> That'd be less dramatic, though. Yeah. The conductor doesn't want to stop or even slow down the train. She doesn't know what she's getting into, he says. This area has a known reputation. Mm -hmm. Virginia marches to the town she saw and finds that it's just a ruin with a cemetery. It is kind of a size of a very small village. It's, it's a big place, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She wanders through the creepy old monastery for a long time, and it's obvious that this was filmed on location somewhere very interesting. Yeah, yeah The sets was. in this were pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet it wasn't nearly as big in real life as it looked here, but yeah, it, it was good. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. She explores a while and starts a fire in a fireplace. She gets ready for bed. Fortunately, she brought her sleeping bag. They were on the train going to a going hotel. To a resort she has a sleeping hotel. bag. How does she have a sleeping bag? Why does she have a sleeping bag? Because reasons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she turns on her portable radio, opens a book, and it's a fun campsite. Then the dead start climbing out of the crown. <laughs> yeah. And then the fun's over. <laughs> the fog rolls in and the tomb starts, tombstones start shifting around in the ground. These are skeletal figures who all mount horse horses. And they're creepy. They are, yeah. yeah. They, they, these are really well done creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For no budget, probably, but yeah, it was really well done. Yeah, it was. Virginia yeah. goes to sleep as the horsemen pass by. The horses all wear shrouds as well. She hears them out there, dresses, and goes to investigate. What's that noise? One of them reaches inside and unlocks the door with their bony hands. Mm -hmm. They chase her until she finds a horse and rides away. The dead horsemen pursue her through many fields, and when they get off their horses, they don't seem so slow anymore. Yeah, they're creepy. The next day, Roger and Betty start searching. The waitress mentions Berzano, an abandoned place, but she gets scared when they start talking about going there. Everyone knows that's Nobody a place you don't goes go. To Berzano. Nobody does. Nobody seen does that. Yeah. Meanwhile, the train conductor spots Virginia's dead body right from the train and calls the police. But Roger and Betty are already on the way there. On horseback. On horseback. Cross country. Uh -huh. Yeah. They explore the ruins and ride right through the cemetery, which looks untouched and undisturbed, just mm. like it did yesterday. Mm -hmm. The horses get scared and leave them behind. Roger sees Egyptian crosses on the graves and explains that they are satanic. They find Virginia's sleeping bag and stuff, but she is nowhere to be found. Eventually, they do run into two detectives from town who explain that Virginia has been murdered. Dun, dun, dun. And that, that kind of made me say, what? Because they were Egyptian symbols. So therefore, it's satanic. No. I mean, that's not, what? No. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I guess anything non-Christian. Yeah, it's a is, it's a non-Christian yeah. style of cross in a yeah, cemetery. Yeah. So something's so, not. So it must there. be satanic. It's not Christian. They no. go and identify the body, and the coroner thinks it was some kind of ritual murder, and she was bitten with over a dozen sets of teeth. Nom 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 nom. nom, nom. <laughs> not eaten, just bitten to death. <laughs> yeah, nommed. <laughs> Betty's assistant comes from the area, and they ask her from Berz uh, ask her about Berzano. The city belonged to the knights who worshipped Satan, and now the knights still come out of their tombs to hunt. When the bells sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The coroner's assistant is a very strange man. 
Mm-hmm. He was funny. Kind of like comical Saddam Hussein looking, didn't he? A little bit, yeah. And yeah. as he's torturing a frog, Virginia gets wheeled in for her opt- after her autopsy. It looks at first like he's going to rape the corpse. He was giving her the eye, and he was yeah. heading over there. Uh-huh. But he gets distracted. By his frog. Yeah. <laughs> as he goes back to tormenting the frog, Virginia gets up and bites him in the neck. So it's kind of a vampirism, it would seem. It seems to be, yeah. yeah. They go see a professor who explains that the Pope excommunicated the Knights for bringing the occult back from the Orient. They sought immortality. See, and then, and then again, one of those, wait, but they were Egyptian crosses brought back from the Orient. Huh? The Orient. I mean, <laughs> Egypt is the Orient back then. Every, everything out there is Everything the east of the Mediterranean, <laughs> pretty much. The yeah. Yeah. Well, you figure the Orient Express. It went to, like, Saudi Arabia. It didn't go to China. Orient doesn't mean yeah. what it means now. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, the They sought out immortality and performed satanic rites. They were hated and feared by the locals. We get a flashback of the knights sacrificing a girl on the altar. They cut up the girl and drank her virgin blood. Literally, they cut her off with their sword, then they all... Yeah, mm-hmm. lick right, the blood Right up. from the spigot. Yeah. The ritual gave them eternal life. Sorta. Yeah. They were sentenced to death, and they were hung until the crows ate out their eyes. But they weren't really dead. Now they find their victims by the sounds they make. They're still blind. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Virginia, dead Virginia, makes her way to Betty's workshop and is set on fire by her assistant. No more Virginia. No more Virginia. Roger wants Pedro, the professor's smuggler son and girlfriend, to go spend the night with him and Betty in Berzano. Pedro rapes Betty in the cemetery. He doesn't believe any of this is real. The monastery bells then ring, and Pedro watches the tombs open. They do to him what they did to Virginia. Nom, 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 nom. Roger hears the screaming and shoots his pistol at the dead man with no effect. Roger then gets his arm cut off, but Pedro's girlfriend won't stop screaming, so they all go after her. Yeah, well, and that's with the the bullets, too. They didn't slow down the monks, but the sound, like, hmm, somebody's over there now, yeah. Roger then dies, and the dead all hear Betty crying. She stops, but they can hear her heartbeat. Mm -hmm. She runs for the train just like Virginia did, but this time the train stops. The conductor's son goes to help Betty, and the dead slowly get off their horses as the son and Betty board the train. They're too slow as the dead board the train and kill everyone aboard. Oops. Oops. Betty hides in the coal car, and the conductor starts the train just as he dies. The train makes a very slow getaway. Mm-hmm. Building speed as when, it approaches the village. When the train the gets to the station, someone there jumps aboard and stops it. Mm-hmm. He helps Betty off the train. She's the only survivor. Other passengers then try to board the train, and the screaming begins. Mm-hmm. The end. <laughs> Until the sequel. Yeah. There's two sequels to this. There's at three least, sequels at least to this. Two. There's, there's three, four. Oh, yeah, there's four total. Okay. I liked it. Mm-hmm. It's I a little it slow and definitely a little dated, but the good parts all still work. Mm-hmm. The scenery and location here make the movie, as do the creature costumes. The shrouds look like someone had been buried in them hundreds of years ago, and most of the skeletons have beards, which is an interesting touch, as are the slow motion shots of the horses riding. Mm-hmm. There are some good gore effects, but they look kind of dated today. The only real humor in the movie is from the coroner's assistant, who gleefully shows them Roger and Betty the wrong body on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, he wheels out this old woman, and he's like, (laughs) and he pulls it up and shows them, that's not her. Oh, really? (laughs) Many of the nighttime scenes were obviously obviously shot in the daytime and a filter was used. But overall, if you like movies that hype up the creepy factor without too much character or story, you'll like this one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think creepy is the best word for this one. Yeah. They're slow, Mm -hmm. they're dark, you know they're going to get you, Yeah, and they look really good. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then there's a couple of sequels, The Return of the the, uh, Blind Dead, Return of the Living Dead. Night of the Seagulls. Night of the Seagulls is the fourth one. Uh Uh-huh. And the gal, the ghost galleon is, or yes. something like that. Yeah. We're going to catch all of them in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. We like the first one. We got more to see. Yeah. Want more. Nom, and nom, speaking nom. of the next couple of weeks, we've got some movies coming up next week. 
We've got The Climax from 1944. I never even heard of that movie. It's a Boris Karloff Universal movie, and from what I've heard, it is horror. Okay. But it doesn't, I don't remember seeing that. I never saw that, never heard of it. The Hammer Horror Classic Brides of Dracula from 1960. I think that I saw that. <clears throat> Long I've ago. seen lots of the Christopher Lee Draculas, but I wouldn't swear that it's all of them, so I, probably, I, I don't know. I probably didn't see it when it came out, since it was 1960? 1960? No, you didn't. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm sure that I saw it. Yeah. The newish movie, The Taking of Deborah Logan, from 2014, and our international feature, Return of the Blind Dead, also known as Return of the Evil Dead, from 1973. Mm -hmm. Give those a watch and see if you agree with us next week. Yeah, let us know what you think of these movies. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. Also, if you got any recent movies you'd like to hear us review, let us know. Or any snacks you'd like to, re like to recommend. <laughs> or snacks you want to send us. <laughs> we always like snacks, yeah. Uh, indie filmmakers, send us your stuff. We'd love to take a look at your things, too. We have done that in the past, and we'll do it again. Yeah. If you send us a film to watch, we will watch it. We even may not if, review it, but we will watch it. Even if it's just a short you know, that you've made on YouTube and... You don't want to point us in that direction and say, hey, watch this and talk about it. Yeah. We will. And you yeah. can catch us on Twitter at, at Horror Bulletin, or you can just stop off at the website at horrorguys.com and leave us a message that way. Mm -hmm. Of course, all our back, show, back shows are audio shows and video shows. You can get there also at horrorguys.com. And mm -hmm. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And we'll see you next week. See ya. <laughs>